Hello, Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are going to look at a patron viewer request. Actually, someone asked me, how do you go about using Visual Studio Code with the Godot game engine for C Sharp development? And that's exactly what we're going to look at today. Now, keep in mind, Godot is currently in beta, and Visual Studio support Visual Studio Code support for Godot is ultimately going to be improved with debugging support. But what we're looking at today, no debugging. So that is something that is coming soon. C Sharp is a new feature to Visual Studio Code 3 Beta. Um, so if you're watching this sometime in the future, things might have changed a little bit. Now, let's just jump right into it. Let's see what we need to actually get started doing C Sharp development using Godot and Visual Studio Code. Now, first off, you're obviously going to need Godot. And there are actually two versions now. There's one with Mono, which is what implements C Sharp, and there's one without. Obviously, we need the one with. Go in here and pick the one that is appropriate to whatever your platform is. So in my case, I'm going to grab the Windows 64-bit version of it. The other thing you obviously need is Visual Studio Code. It's available on um, Windows and Mac, possibly Linux. I actually forget. Does it show me? Yep. So there's a Linux install too. Windows, Windows Mac, Linux editor. It's probably my favorite editor out there right now. Uh, so if you haven't already grabbed it, go ahead and grab that guy too and install it. Um, so download should be done. We need to just go ahead and grab Godot and its various bits. And we got to put it somewhere. So we'll put that in temp. So this is this would be wherever you installed Godot. Remember this path though, because we're going to use it in a moment. And I'm gonna just rename this guy Godot to make life a little bit easier later on. So there is the Godot game engine. We are ready to go on that front and Visual Studio Code should already be running. Here it is updated to the newest version as of writing anyways. And let's look at using these two together. First off, make sure you've run Visual Studio Code at least once. I don't think it should matter, but it might. Head on back to your Godot. Uh, fire it up for the first time. <coughs> Since I just downloaded it, it's going to ask me if it's secure or not. Just ignore that. It's completely unimportant. So here we go. We fired up Godot for the first time. Uh, go ahead and create a new project. Uh, create that folder. Uh, YT demo. Create the folder, create our project. Okay, here you go. So we're just gonna create a very, very, very simple C-sharp project. Uh, so we're in here, we're gonna switch over here to 2D view. We'll add a, a root node here of type node. We will save our scene. So, so keep in mind the scene was saved as node.tscn. Um, actually gonna want our scene to actually probably do something. So let's go ahead and put a sprite on there. So we will rename the uh, my sprite for a reason I will show you in a second. Uh, set the texture of my sprite to the Godot logo. There you go. So you got a basic 2D application with a sprite like so. Now what we want to do is actually go ahead and add a script to this guy. Uh, we'll do that in a minute. So we're going to tie it up now so that the editor is hooked up to use um, Visual Studio. Uh, so what you need to do is go into editor, editor settings, Scroll on down here to the mono section, select editor, and then in the drop down here, select Visual Studio Code. And that's it. So we should now have the proper editor set up. We should be good to go in that regard. Now with our guy selected, we're going to attach a script to it. And here is why I changed it. By default, the name of your script is going to match whatever. So we're gonna switch this over to C Sharp. But the name of your script will be your class name or your node name.cs. And if you're inheriting from Sprite and your script name is Sprite, you basically create a, a code error. Uh, something I think they should check for. Hopefully they will in the future. Uh, but do make sure that you're not using the name of your class as the name of your script or you're going to have problems. So anyways, we create our script. It's creating the C-sharp project for us. Um, should just take a second. We'll let this run. It's building the solution for the first time. Uh, this all depends on MS Build. So of course there's a couple things you need to have installed, but most importantly, you need to have Mono installed. So grab the most recent version of Mono and you should be good to go. And you'll notice there, boom, it just fired us up and we are now in Visual Studio Code. Pretty straightforward, pretty cool. And you'll notice already we can actually, so if I come here and I go public override void and I wanna implement the uh, update function, I can actually do control space and get 
code completion, but this isn't working. Why is this not working? Well, that is because I went back to a completely stock version of Visual Studio Code to show you what the next step is. You have to come here to your extensions right here and choose C Sharp. And the key one you want is this guy. You can tell who it is because it's got a thousand million times more downloads than everything else. Go ahead and install that. And this basically just added C Sharp support to Visual Studio Code. And now uh, it's gonna take a second because it's gonna have to download a couple of things off of the interwebs. Uh, as you can see, about 60 megs worth of download so far. Installs the package and do, 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 do. finished. All right, so there you go. We now have an update. So I come down here, we can start that over again. Public override void control space. And there you see, we are getting full auto completion coming from the world of the Godot bindings. Uh, so pretty sweet, you get your full um, uh, code completion as you'd expect, uh, code highlighting, etc. So if you want to implement uh, process or the, the function that's called per tick, uh, we can do so like that. And if we wanted to get the tree, get tree. Like so, and then your various other code files are all available. Uh, it makes it very, very, very simple. So what we're gonna do for the examples, each in the process is this dot move by, oh, move local x by one. And our code is essentially done. We'll go ahead and save that. We can flip back to Godot. So the next thing we're gonna look at is running your code. So we'll flip back to Godot. There is no logic selected here. So let's pick our initial scene as the run scene. So now our C-sharp code is behind the scenes and you will see, boom, it is updating. So that is developing directly from Visual Studio Code. You are doing your coding over here in Visual Studio. Um, you can do all your development outside of Godot. You don't even actually have to have the Godot game engine or game editor loaded at all. You can actually invoke it completely on your own. And we're actually gonna take a look at that process next. We're gonna look at a little couple convenience functions here. Uh, so we've got our editor set up. Now we're gonna look at is building a task so that we can actually run Godot directly from uh, our editor here. So we're gonna go up to tasks and go to configure task. And we're gonna create a tasks.json file from a template and you pick others. And this is basically outlined. What we wanna do is say, um, I'm gonna stay consistent. I've got a text-based version of this, by the way. Um, I will link that down below. So if, I, if you're not keeping up with me, don't worry. There's a step-by-step -step text guide as well. So we're gonna call this guy run Godot. It is a shell command. And basically we are going to run the command of our Godot version. So what you need to do is run out to where you installed it. So remember before, that is that. Now you'll notice I'm double escaping each of the slashes, you have to do that. Um, and then what we need to do also is give it some command line parameter. Now if you check my channel, there's actually a thing from uh, running Godot from the command line. That's essentially what we are doing right here. So there's a couple of switches you can use, etc. But in this case, all we really want to do is tell it the name of our scene. So we're gonna run this command and we're gonna pass it the value node.tscn. So if you go back to Godot, you will see we have a scene called node.tscn. We're just telling it what scene to run when we run this command. And that should be it. I'll switch back to Visual Studio here, save out our uh, tasks. Now if I go up to the palette, so command or control shift P, brings up the commands here and you can do run task. And we wanna run a task. And then you can see there, run Godot is my option. This is the task we just defined. I click that. Uh, let's see, never scan the output, task output. This will fire off Godot. And there is our example running. So you don't need to have Godot in the scenario at all. Obviously you need it there to uh, position your scenes to create new classes. I suppose you could do that by hand too. Uh, if you want to get into the managing the project files yourself, etc but you don't need Godot open anymore. You can do your coding entirely here. Now what you might find is control shift P, run task, um, run Godot. That's not the most convenient thing in the world. What you probably wanna do is set up a keyboard hotkey to make that whole process quite a bit faster. Um, we can do that, and there's probably a much faster way of going about getting to this first setting, but this is how I do it. So basically I go to keyboard shortcuts, and it'll give me the option with a link here for setting my own keyboard bindings. That's exactly what I want. And it spits up this guy over here. And now what we're gonna do is create our own binding. And again, I have this linked uh, at game from scratch. 
if you want to get the exact text of what I do here. But this is the binding we're going to use. Basically, we're mapping the key to the Control plus G keyboard combo. Um, we are doing a run task, and we are running the task run Godot. So obviously, it needs to match the name that you chose here. So we're binding it, binding it to the Control plus G key. Now, I have no idea if that key was already in use. If it was, obviously, you're going to have a bit of an issue with whatever that old functionality is, is now overwritten. And you can actually go through your keyboard shortcuts and see what all of them are. But I'm just going to assume Control G was fine. Um, save that. We're good to run. So we head on back over to our code. So let's say you made some changes to your code. So let's say we updated this guy to run by two instead. I just do Control G. And you'll see it just fired off. And boom, there's Godot running. So if you want to work inside of Visual Studio Code to do the primary amount of your coding and just run it through Godot, that's exactly how you can do it. Uh, keyboard shortcuts makes things a lot faster. Uh, etc. Now, at the end, they are working on Visual Studio debugger support. If you go back to, I think, here, no, it wasn't. It wasn't this release. Uh, but one of their posts basically says that the C sharp support for um, Mono Develop and uh, Visual Studio Code debugging is coming soon. It's just not here yet. So right now you can't do like a line by line debugging. Uh, hopefully that will be in place soon. But this kind of gets you you know, 85% of the way there, you can at least have a full editor or full code completion in Visual Studio. You don't even need to fire up Godot. So I could shut this guy down completely. Just head on back over here. And once again, just control G to run it and off it goes. Or uh, coincidentally, you don't have to do any of this. You could just use um, Visual Studio Code straight on as a text editor and then switch back to Godot and press play if that's your preferred way of doing things. But as you can see, there's actually already a pretty nice workflow between Visual Studio Code and the Godot game engine for C-sharp developers. Now, coincidentally, if you're actually a GD script developer, well, you should be aware, I'm not going to go into detail on it right now, uh, but if you come into the extensions list and search for Godot, you'll actually find there's Godot tools available out there that gives you the ability to get full GD script programming inside of Godot to fire off Godot from here for GD script development, not C-sharp development. Uh, workflow is a little bit different, but uh, again, I think you still, still get your full code completion, uh, syntax highlighting, etc. if you go that route. So if you're interested in that editor, you can see it's got syntax highlighting, uh, auto completion, static code validation. Uh, you can open your products from projects um, from Visual Studio Code, uh, full documentation support. Um, so some pretty cool stuff that you can do with that editor, but that's more for a GD script workflow. What we saw today was a C-sharp or mono development workflow. Anyways, uh, hope that helped. Uh, again, if you're uh, on Patreon, do be sure if you've got questions to let me know. And you know what? If you're <laughs> actually on YouTube, I try my best to answer questions as, as well as I can in follow-up videos if, if you know a video is warranted. So, you know, fire away with your questions. And again, I do appreciate all your support. Um, and that's it for now. I hope you found that useful. If you did, of course, please do click that like button. And if you're into all kinds of game development stuff, including a really exciting Godot 3 tutorial series that's about to uh, underway, uh, or about to start, I guess is the right word, um, you know, stay tuned, hit subscribe, and uh, hopefully you'll find a lot to love here. All right, I will see you all later. If you have any questions, do again let me know in the comments down below. See you later. Goodbye.